Serious amateur astronomers often spend thousands of dollars on advanced telescopes and cameras, leading one to think that without advanced equipment, there just isn't anything much to see. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. While a large telescope is good at showing tiny objects in great detail, it generally fails at looking at very large areas of the sky. That's where binoculars are the perfect tool. With them, you'll be seeing things in context, meaning it's easy to relate what you see with the naked eye to the binocular image. This makes it much easier to learn the constellations and where objects actually are in the sky, a very handy skill to have if you someday move up to more advanced equipment. While any binocular can be used to view the night sky, here are some helpful guidelines for the best results. In general, you want a large aperture, meaning the diameter of the front lenses should be as large as possible. For example, a pair of 8x42 binoculars will give you a brighter image than a pair of 8x25s. You also don't want a lot of magnification, as that will just make them hard to hold steady for a sharp view. The best common size would be 7x50. The first number is magnification, in this case 7 times, and the second is the aperture in millimeters. Now if your binoculars don't match this specification, don't despair. Any pair is capable of showing the night sky, so please use what you have. Now that you have your binoculars, there are a few other things to keep in mind. Most of what you'll be trying to see is faint, so the darker your skies, the more you'll see. Be sure to get away from local lighting as much as possible, or at least shield your eyes from it. Once it's as dark as possible, don't start viewing right away. It takes time for your eyes to adapt to their maximum low light sensitivity. For most people, that's about 20 minutes. It takes time to gain that sensitivity, but it can be lost in a moment if exposed to bright light, so be careful. Covering a flashlight with red cellophane will be a great aid, allowing you to look at charts and star finders without losing your dark adaptation. Before you do any observing, you should make sure that the binoculars are properly adjusted to your vision. This is best done during the day. Find something that is fairly far away, a mountaintop, light pole, or distant building. Focus the binocular in the usual way, but only use your left eye. Focus until the image is sharp. Without changing the focus, close your left eye and open your right. Now rotate the little ring with the numbers on it to make the view as sharp as possible in your right eye. This will balance focus so both eyes are seeing the sharpest possible view. Now adjust the separation of the eyepieces so that both images combine without having to strain your eyes. Lastly, never ever use your binoculars to look at the sun. You'll burn out your retinas faster than you can look away. If you're observing a solar eclipse, you must use approved, safe filters that are designed for the task. Just putting something dark over the lenses is not enough, because they still might pass infrared light, which will damage your eyes just as fast as using no filter at all. Now that you're ready to go, it's time to think about what to look at. Remember, binoculars have low magnification but a wide field of view, so they can do things that a large telescope cannot. They are also easy on the eyes. You'll see more because you can use both of them. The moon is a good place to start. While you won't see much detail, binoculars are perfect for viewing lunar eclipses of any kind. If it's a total eclipse, the reddish colors during totality will be stunning as will the background of stars that would be visible right up to the lunar limb, an amazing sight. Also look for the movement of the moon in its orbit. Watch for stars winking out at the east edge of the moon and suddenly appearing again on the western side, a vivid example of the moon's motion across the background stars. Bright naked eye comets are also another type of object where binoculars excel. Comet tails can be several degrees long, so the wide field of view is perfect for seeing the entire object. These wanderers from deep space can put on quite a show, sometimes suddenly brightening or even breaking up. Comets are always changing, so they're worth following from night to night if you can. Now you probably won't think to use binoculars to observe the planets, but there are exceptions. Finding the planet Mercury can be very challenging with the naked eye, as it's always low to the horizon after sunset. Sweeping that area with binoculars is a great way to pick it up during the times it's visible. Just remember the warning about the sun. Don't start sweeping for Mercury until the sun is well below the horizon. Another planet worth looking at is Jupiter. The four brightest moons can sometimes be seen, even at the low magnification binoculars provide. 
Look for tiny star-like objects in a line very close to the planet itself. Check them out night to night as their positions are always changing. Remember, these moons were discovered by Galileo. His telescope had greater magnification, but nowhere near the optical quality of your modern binocular. Now that we've warmed up with a few solar system objects, let's leave our home galaxy completely. If it's fall or winter, locate the constellation of Andromeda. It can be found between the Great Square of Pegasus and the W of Cassiopeia. If you slowly sweep the area, you'll find an elongated fuzzy glow. That patch of light is the Andromeda Galaxy, also known as M31. At a distance of 2.5 million light years, it's the closest galaxy to our own and the only one that can be reliably seen with the naked eye. Can you spot it without binoculars? Another winter object not to be missed is in the constellation of Orion. Find the belt and sweep downward along the line of stars that form the sword. You'll notice that what looks like a star with the naked eye is actually a glowing greenish patch of light. You'll have just found the famous Orion Nebula, or M42. This is a huge area of dust and gas that's illuminated by the hot young stars that have formed within it. Located approximately 1,300 light years from Earth, this is a place where stars and planets are being created. Because of its distance, we're seeing it not as it is now, but as it was 1,300 years ago. You're looking into the deep past around the 8th century. It's taken that long for the image you see to travel the vast distance from M42 and reach your eyes. Our next object is also visible during the winter months. This time it's the bright and beautiful star cluster, the Pleiades, or M45. Easy to spot in the constellation of Taurus the Bull, it's visible to the naked eye as a fuzzy patch of light with a few dim stars within it. Sweep it up in your binoculars and you'll see dozens of stars covering an area much larger than the full moon. These stars were born in a cloud of gas and dust, much like the Orion Nebula. However, most of the gas and dust is gone now, leaving the cluster of stars behind. Located only 444 light years away, this object is in cosmic terms relatively close to us. It's also very young, with the bright stars being no more than 100 million years old. Now it's time to come in from the cold to see what your binoculars can do with the skies of summer. In this case, it's another galaxy, but this time it's our own, the Milky Way. It's best seen in the summer months when it stretches across the sky with its brightest sections located to the south between the teapot of Sagittarius and the distinctive hook-shaped constellation of Scorpius. As you sweep the Milky Way from north to south, you'll see what looks like a dim cloud to the naked eye is actually made up of thousands of stars. You're seeing a galaxy from the inside an object that's 200,000 light years across and contains between 100 and 400 billion stars and at least as many planets. As you sweep the Milky Way to the south, you'll be looking towards our galaxy's core, the home of a supermassive black hole, a place of unimaginable chaos and energy. In this video, we've only begun to reveal the wonders that a humble pair of well-adjusted binoculars can show. With a map that shows the constellations and brighter deep sky objects, you'll have hundreds of hours of discovery ahead of you. Some may be just dim patches of light, but once you learn a little bit about what you're seeing, your imagination can take you far. When the time comes to start using a larger telescope, you'll be able to use what you've learned to find objects with ease and without needing a computer. You will have learned the night sky, a companion that will last you a lifetime.